there was a question on the Facebook page that I'm going to try to answer here. And the question was basically this. When you've got two reusable elements on a single page, the what the questioner wants is to get an input from one, click a button, and then transmit the value of that input to a custom state in the second reusable group or reusable element generally, but I'm going to treat this as a reusable group. That's how I'm going to make, implement the solution. Um, so in, in addition to making the input in reusable group A the custom state value of reusable group B, they're wondering if you could scroll to the header of the second reusable group on the click of that button. So I think this can be done, and I'm going to do that. So this is roughly what I'm going to build. Um, the, the inputs I'm working with are animals arbitrarily. So uh, and this reusable group is going to ask you for an animal name. We're going to say Maisie and pick the species, the mouse. And then I click the button. So it scrolls down to the second reusable group. And um, we know that the custom state got changed because here in the header, I, uh, I had it write out the value of the custom state of the group. So that's essentially what we're looking to do. I also, this wasn't really asked, but uh, kind of assumed this would be wanted, that I would make it repeatable. So if we scroll back up here, you could just type in another animal's name, you know, uh, Ruby the dog, and click it, and the same logic works again. It scrolls down and it changes the custom state of the second group. So how to do that? Well, I guess I'll give a, a broad description um, and maybe talk a little bit about why this is a challenge. So when you build a reusable element, you're doing a lot of the logic inside of an element that's not in a page. It's just uh, a, an independently freestanding thing. And what you actually put on the page are copies of the reusable element. And there's a lot of inflexibility in the sense that uh, you can't work that much with the copy. You've got to do the logic in the original. And uh, once you put the copy on the page, there's a limited amount of stuff you could do with it, but not, 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 a, not anything like full functionality. And in particular, these groups, these copies of reusable groups or other reusable elements, um, they have trouble seeing outside themselves and also the, the page has trouble seeing into them. So you cannot do what you would maybe be able to do with another group, which is uh, you can look inside the contents. If you're in group A manipulating something, you could do a workflow that will affect the contents of group B. You can't really do that with reusable groups and you kind of have to use the page, the, the page's limited ability to see and be seen by the copies of the reusable elements in order to um, mediate between two reusable elements on the same page. So that's all very abstract. Um, let's get into building some actual logic here. So we're, we're going to go, we're going to use a blank page, the reusable groups page. But before we even do that, I'm just going to create the reusable element that we need. We're going to call it anim animals. And we don't need to clone it. We just create an empty new thing. And let's give this some size. Um, we want to build a header in it. Uh, actually, let's build a custom state first. So we build a custom state, and it's going to be of type animal. And we can call it custom animal. The state type is animal. And that should be that. And then in order to know that we've succeeded, we want to create a header. So the header is just going to be a regular group. And we'll give it a border so we can see. And remove style, create a border because we want to see that we are scrolling to it. And within this group, well, we'll give this group a value of the custom state. So the type of content is going to be animal. And the value is going to be this reusable groups 
custom state and then we'll put a text box in there to show what we've got. So the value of the text box is going to be the uh, the value of the parent group and of course the name. So we put the header up there and then we'll go way down here and build an input box. And we're doing we're doing it way down here so that we know that the scrolling function is going to work because we want to make sure we're scrolling to the header and not just to any other part of the group. Um, you know, we'll even move this a little down. So the input box is just going to take uh, an animal name. It's going to be of type text, and we don't need to do that much with it. We'll put a button here. say create animal and then we are going to use the uh, well, well, we'll do a workflow here so when the button create animal is clicked so the first thing we want to do is create an animal and the second thing we're gonna do is create a a value for the custom state which is going to be this animal so first we use data to create a new thing it's going to be of type animal and we have to give it a name which is the input animals names value and then we want to create we don't want to create we want to set the custom state as the animal so um, animals is the name of this reusable group and the value is going to be the result of step one now, i forgot i started saying that i'm going to give an overview of how to do this and uh, i i spoke really abstractly of we're going to use the a workflow on the page to do it so when we create the animal in reusable group a we are going to uh, first create it and then change the custom state of reusable group A and then in order to get the desired result, the custom state of reusable group B to be this animal, we're going to use the page to detect a change in the custom state of reusable group A, which is one of the few things that a page can look into a reusable group for. So when we create this, uh, when we when we give a value to this custom state of the first reusable group, that is going to trigger the setting on the page on the pages workflow it's going to trigger the setting of a value of reusable group b and um i'll, I'll show that so that it doesn't uh, sound strange uh i mean it, it sounds strange i'll show it so you can see what i mean and um, we're going to do the scrolling by uh, also on the page by scrolling to reusable group b and then within reusable group b we are going to scroll to the header when its custom state is filled. Uh, and then at the end, we're going to actually make this process repeatable. So this is all the logic we're going to use for now within the repeatable, the reusable group. Um, so we've got our group. We're going to go to our page called reusable groups, confusingly. There's a deleted reusable element here, probably from earlier when I tried this. Let's get rid of those. And we're going to put some fresh reusable groups here. So we go down to reusable elements, we get animals, and we're going to create two copies. Copy one, which is animals A, and copies two, animals B. So right now we this does not do anything other than uh, when you type something in here, the animal's name and create animal, it's going to assign a custom state to this reusable group, animals A, because that is the internal logic of the reusable group that we just created. So what we want to do on this page, um, and actually I just need to go into the workflow here, we need to use a trigger 
do when condition is true. And the condition is going to be animals A, the first reusable group. This custom state is not empty. So that means when it changes from being not uh, when it changes from being empty to not empty, this antecedent will be triggered, and then we can do the logic that we want, which is to set the custom state of reusable group B at the same value, the value of animal A's custom animal. So we should be able to test this logic, see if it works. So we, here we have the empty header of group A. Group B is down here. If we put in the animal's name, Ruby, and hit create animal, then uh, we see that the custom state of reusable group A has changed because, uh, because it gets spelled out here. And we have also successfully changed the custom state of reusable group B. So we did step one. And step two is going to be scrolling. And we use the same trigger. We just want the, um, the viewer to scroll down to the repeatable group B. So if we preview that, The expectation is it's not going to scroll to, to the header of reusable group B. It's just going to scroll to the group. And you know what? To see this, we should probably create a border on the reusable group. So we could see exactly where the scrolling is going to. So we'll go back to reusable groups hit preview again, and we'll test out the scrolling. So we'll create another new animal. This will be Maisie the mouse. Create animal, and it scrolls, and I think this shows it scrolls to the top of reusable group B, not to the header of reusable group B over here. So in order to get it to go to the header, that's going to have to be done internally within the reusable group using a similar condition to the one we just used. When the condition is true, and the condition is going to be that this reusable group, um, what am I doing? The condition is going to be that this reusable group ha has a custom state that is not empty. Then we scroll down to the header, scroll to. And the header is the group animal. So let's go back to the page and try that. Animal's name, Dougie, create animal. And here it scrolls to the header, as you see, not the top of the reusable group. It scrolled all the way down to the header. So we've done the, the two things that were requested. We got the custom state of the second reusable group to be the custom state, to be the input, rather, of the first reusable group. And we got scrolling down to the header. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to do was to make this whole process repeatable, um, meaning if I go back here and I change Dougie to Shobi and create animal, we don't get the same effect. So we changed the the custom state of repeatable group A, as you could see by the change in the header. But we did not scroll down here, and we did not change the value of the custom state of reusable group B, which remains Dougie as before. Um, the way to fix this is, again, to go to the workflow. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is change this from just once to every time, so that every time the custom state of A goes from empty to having a value, the, the same workflow is triggered. 
Um, now it's not enough to change every time because this condition is not going to be triggered when the custom animal changes from one filled value to another. It needs to change from an empty value to a filled value. So the way we do that is after we got what we want, we change the custom state of B and we scroll to B, we could go ahead and erase the custom state of A by setting this state to nothing. And just to be, to make it look a little nicer, we can also reset the data so that we get a, a blank input box and not the input box with the previously filled value in reusable group A. So I think this is everything we need. Let's just test it. Type in animal's name, mighty mouse, create the animal, scrolls to B, gives the value to B, and then it should have erased the custom state here, which it did, because you see the uh, the text box, the, the header with the text box showing the custom state's value is empty, and also the input was reset. And if we try again, let's try, what's another dog's name, Fido? We go back to here. So seems to all work fine, and that is how I did it.